Hello guys, how are you? The Code Holic is here. Today I'm going to do a slightly different type of video. I'm going to share my experience about algorithms and help you guys who has right now trouble to learn the algorithms or not. I know many, many people are telling that the algorithms are, and data structures are not necessary for web developers, you don't need to learn them, and probably algorithm engineers and software engineers will tell you that they are essential tools for you. And I will try to give you my experience, I'm going to give you my examples, how the knowledge of the algorithms helped me, and my advice is uh, whether you need to spend time and money probably learning these tools or not. You need to listen to everyone, but finally you need to make a choice on your own, okay? To start from the beginning, if you don't have any idea what are algorithms and data structures, you generally don't know whether you need them or not. Maybe you need them daily basis, okay? Imagine the case that you have to stick a nail into the wood and you don't have any idea what is a hammer, okay? So, and probably you're gonna use something else, maybe stone. So you will take stone, start hitting it to the nail, and you will try just to achieve your goal. And finally, at the end of the day, you, you may achieve it, you may stick a nail into the wood, but it will take uh, more time, uh, it will trouble you, and it's not really convenient to like uh, stick a nail into the wood with, with stone, right? And if someone will just tell you, hey boy, there exists a tool, it's called hammer, go buy, and that tool's only purpose is just to stick a nail into the wood and nothing else. Okay, so you'd probably go to the shop, buy the tool, and next time when you want to stick a nail into the wood, you would use that tool. So many stick a nails into the wood. The same thing happens about algorithms. So if you don't know one specific algorithm, you don't have any idea about its existence, you don't know whether you need it or not, okay? If you do some programming things, if you are not just a markup user who just writes HTML, CSS, and probably no one does this nowadays, only HTML, CSS, I mean. So if you do some programming tasks, you have to write some logic. And always we are, we are coming up to our own logic uh, and maybe there already exists the best solution for, for the problem we are right now seeking for. Imagine the case that you don't have any idea what is a binary search, which is, by the way, is really simple and elegant algorithm to search an element in a sorted array. Okay? You don't have any idea about binary search and you want to find an element in an array, which is a sorted. You generally start iterating over the whole array and comparing each element to the your target element, what you what you are just looking for, and if you find that element, you're gonna return it. Okay? If you use binary search, your code will be more and more optimal. Uh, iterating over the whole array will work just fine on hundreds or thousands or maybe even hundreds of thousands of records, but as soon as your data grow to millions or hundreds of millions, your code will be really, really slow. However, the binary search algorithm can look up an elements in a sorted array on like billions or even trillions of data, okay? So this is really, really fast algorithm. So the same thing happens on every other algorithm. If you don't have any idea, you don't know whether you need it or not. So my first advice is just to have a look at the algorithms and data structures to have basic idea whether you need them or not. Here's my example. About five years ago, I was working on an e-commerce project and I was trying to output the category tree on this e-commerce project website's homepage. Okay, and I did it in several hours, I output it and everyone was happy. The, uh, the key point here is that the data was saved in a relational table using nested set model principle. If you don't know this, just don't pay attention, it's just a way how you can save the tree data in a relational table. Okay, and my job was to convert that relational, uh, relational plane data into tree structure. Okay, and as I said, I did it and everyone was happy. After six months, six months later, we discovered that my code was working really slow. And when we tried to analyze the problem, it was because the data, data grew. And my code re was really unoptimal for large data. 
and there, there were some ideas to increase the server power to enable the caching but I said that the code was bad and I had to rewrite this. And I made this decision by my knowledge which I gained in this six months period. In this six months period, I took Stanford University course design and analysis of algorithms and I learned a lot of things from this course. That course is for intermediate people and uh, it's not for beginners. And uh, I had some experience from university. Uh, I wasn't a beginner at the time and I, I finally completed the course. It was not really easy, but I finally completed the course and I learned a lot of things. And I learned a lot of algorithms also working with tree data. Okay, and after, after this, when we discovered that the, my code was like a bad and slow and it was working slow, and I decided to rewrite it and I used the binary search algorithm also. I used some uh, algorithms working with trees and I rewrote the data and I also analyzed the complexity, the time complexity of my old code, which was big O of n cube. And my new code's time complexity, however, was big O of n log n. And there's a huge difference between these two uh, values, big O of n cube and big O of n log n. And that made the code to run super, super fast. So it needed about two seconds to uh, generate a tree on the, on the data. And my new code needed about 20 milliseconds to generate the uh, same data on the uh, the same tree data on the same uh, row data. Okay, so that's that's my story. I had previously used algorithms and I knew how elegant using these algorithms were, but that was the best example for me that how the knowledge of the algorithms can help you in many cases. If I just didn't know that algorithm. If I just didn't use that like complex algorithms together bind, we would have to increase either per server power or like caching and it would finally work, but we would have to increase our cost and probably it would not be as good as we wanted. Now I'm going to give you five examples why I think that learning algorithms and data structures are really, really important. Not mandatory. I don't ever say that learning algorithms and data structures are mandatory. These are optional tools. There are many out there, many, many freelancing developers who are working and earning quite a lot and they just don't have any experience working with algorithms. And I have also uh, like teammates who are doing, who are working like this, but I'm saying Design uh, the algorithms and data structures are optional, but really, really useful tools. They are just additional tools to your toolbox, which gives you a possibility to solve problems easier, to like uh, to have approach to the problems in a different mind, and that just changes your thinking in in the best way. Okay, five reasons why I think you should spend time in algorithms. Number one reason is that when you know algorithms and data structures, you can, you can easily pass any kind of interview steps. So if you are a master in algorithms and data structures, you can be hired by Google, Facebook, and the giant companies. And uh, nowadays, every service company asks some questions about algorithms, and you can just simply key cast any coding interviews. Number two reason for me is that learning these tools gives you different vision. It's like a buying new glass, putting and looking things in a different way. So previously, when I didn't have any experience, I was like approaching to the problems with my thoughts. Uh, and whenever I found the problem, it was okay, it was working and that's it. But after learning algorithms, uh, you are always thinking that there is a best way, okay? So you, when you come up your own solution, you're thinking that, okay, this works, but maybe there is a best way. And uh, that's exactly how you should think. And that uh, learning algorithms and data structures give you the knowledge of about that tool set, but it gives you also additional thinking that, okay, I came up to my solution, but maybe there is a best way. And you're always seeking to the best ways, which I think simply makes you a better programmer. Number three reason for me is that learning algorithms and doing some problems, just poor problems, uh, 
I mean, not in the real projects, just solving problems using data structures, some complex data structures and algorithms is a really, really good exercise for your brain. I remember uh, several months ago, Traversy Media, which is a YouTube channel, uh, uploaded a video where he mentioned one sentence, and I remember this sentence, probably I will remember it forever, uh, doing uh, problems, solving problems with algorithms and data structures is like doing push-ups for your brain. And I think that's excellent comparison. So you're always like uh, pushing up your brain to think more, to solve more, and that's excellent exercise for your brain. Number four reason is that when you have that knowledge and when you come up to the problem, when you just come across to the problem and you come up to the solution using these tools, algorithms or data structures like a Dijkstra's algorithm, you apply to your data immediately and it gives you the final result and that's the amazing feeling. Believe me. So that, let's say, that's like a nirvana, so you, you feel it. You feel it in your bones and that's, that's really amazing. So when you actually realize your knowledge of the algorithms and data structures in your actual project, in your actual task, that's amazing. And the final reason is the reason which I mentioned at the beginning of the video is that you should always try to spend some time and learn the thing uh, and then decide whether you need that or not, okay? So the same thing happens in any kind of areas like choosing the frameworks. You need to like uh, have a look at this, have a look at that, and then finally you choose the one which you prefer. The same thing happens here. You need to have a look at the algorithms. You need to at least take the basic uh, course, learn some basic things like, as I said, binary search, quick sort, some basic algorithm, algorithms and data structures like linked list, QStack, and things like that. And after this, you need to decide, is it does it worth spending time and money in this or not? And if so, you can proceed and go to much more complex, complex uh, data structures and algorithms like a Dijkstra's or graphs and things like that. Okay, that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If so, please let me know in the comment section what you think, leave a like, uh, hit the subscribe buttons and see you guys in the next time.